be glad to introduce Dr. Vikas Kumar, who is a professor at the University of Idaho, and uh, he is going to present his research on the potential role of, function, of functional feed additives, L-glutamine, and bile salts in mitigation of soybean meal-induced enteritis and rainbow trout, Oncorhynchus mycus. Vikas? First of all, I would like to thanks to ISFNF team to organize such a great symposium in this virtual world. It's my pleasure to be part of this symposium. Today, I'm going to talk about the role of functional feed additives to mitigate the soybean meal induced enteritis in trout. It is well known that soybean is a major player in aqua feed industry. But personally, I believe that soybean is not anymore considered as an alternative feed ingredient. It is the major feed ingredients. It doesn't matter what kind of feed you formulate, soybean would be the always major um, ingredient. What is the beauty behind it? Why it's the major player? Soybean seed provides you almost 20 to 25% oil, which is good for human food and also for animal and fish feed. It is a good source of pharmaceutical compounds. I don't want to go there, but once you take out the oil from the seed, leftover residue is called protein rich seed meal. This rich seed meal contains 40 to 50% protein, which is well balanced with essential amino acids, uh, except lysine and methionine. It is a, you know, comparable protein sources compared to the other alternative feed ingredients in aqua food industry. So it's great, you know, this soybean meal should be the best protein source for aquaculture. And actually it is, but there are some limitations and drawbacks. You cannot add too much soy in carnivore fish feed because this soybean seed meal contains some of the anti-nutritional factors. And we believe that those anti-nutritional factor cause soybean meal induced enteritis. What is this in enteritis? Where it is happening? It is not happening in the stomach. It is not happening in the proximal intestine. It's not in the mid intestine. It's happening into the distal intestine. In layman word, you could say that it's just an inflammation um, of gut. That's layman word. You can explain this enteritis. Right side on my slide, you could see on the top is the healthy um, gut. Okay. On the bottom side, you could look at those guts are not healthy. It are, it, those both pictures are designed by my lab and just to interpret how the healthy and unhealthy um, gut look like. Usually, if you have too much soybean uh, meal in the salmonids diet, what they do is that there is chance they cause inflammation. First, it started with pro-inflammatory cycles that leads to increase in cytokine gene expression, including TNF-alpha. Thereafter, you know, they lose the barrier function. What is the barrier function? That means that changes the tight junctions proteins. So this proteins is holding the two interocytes. Okay, if this protein will lose, what will happen on the bottom? You can see on this figure that both intracytes get separated and they lose the tight junction and they allow these macrophages to go inside the gut and that's called leaky gut, okay? So who plays important role in that? Who controls this? There are uh, some genes and proteins which are responsible for that. One of the major player is the myosin light chain kinase, which plays important role for this um, uh, losing the barrier functions. If everything happens, if inflammation happens and uh, they lose their barrier function, that alter the gut morphology. And that's what you see into the gut histology data. But we don't know the exact mechanism behind it. It's still unclear. But based on the literature, based on our assumption, we believe that TNF alpha is associated to mycin like chain kinase, which is mediated and leads to hyperpermeability. That is called leaky gut or, you know, uh, enteritis. That's why we come up with a 
goal to develop a feed which has an additive that additive can mitigate those intertitis okay um, and we are not only understanding the uh, intertitis but we also looking inside the molecular mechanism what is happening and how it is happening and how long it is going to happen okay so we use the first additive that is called glutamine which is non-essential amino acid why we choose the glutamine because it is a great source of energy for enterocytes and then it acts as an anti-inflammatory agent and it also uh, decreases the expression of TNF alpha and mycin lysine kinase which are responsible for kind of inflammation and so on that's why we choose the glutamine so here is the very clear cut uh, experimental design um, it's two by three factorial design we use the two types of trout trout a and trout b trout a is res not very resistant to the soybean meal trout b is very resistant to the soybean meal inclusion that means they are resistant to the intertitis so, trout b so there are two types of commercial trout we choose three types of diet diet a is the fish meal diet two is the soybean meal diet three is the soybean meal with glutamine soybean diet contains almost 30 percent soybean meal then three diets fed to both types of trout for 30 weeks why we did the 30 weeks i would like to explain you a little bit most of the study in fish nutrition i would i can challenge you almost 80 percent of the fish feeding trial in aquaculture nutrition is only for 8 to 12 weeks not only few studies for long-term study okay but we decided to run this trial for 30 weeks why we want to check how this intertitis happen when it starts when it ends or it never ending so for example if you add this glutamine or any feed additives intertitis can be mitigated after eight weeks or 10 weeks or 12 weeks we don't know okay so we want to know when the, is the starting point secondly we want to know is the animal has the capacity could recover themselves so for example in human or terrestrial animals you know if we have some inflammation in our body there is a chance that our body cure themselves you know so we don't need to visit doctor you know till you don't get fever you don't know that what's problem inside similarly to the face if fish can can recover themselves or not that's why we decided to run uh the histological analysis and gene expression analysis and other uh, analysis every six weeks to figure out what is the point to start the intertitis when is the ending point okay that's why we in the that's why we done this trial for 30 weeks. typical uh, feed formulation um, we use the 30 percent soybean meal uh, and then we use the two percent alanine glutamine which was coming from agenomy we fed this animal for 30 weeks and you could see the growth data strain a which are not very resistant to the intertitis strain b is more resistant to the intertitis especially with the soybean uh, induced intertitis you could see that um, in terms of growth every six weeks there was no significant difference in growth but however the numerically soybean meal fed group was always lower in strain a but not statistically just numerically However, in strain B, which is kind of more resistant to the intertitis, exhibited better growth performance for soybean meal fed group. We don't know the reason, but it looks like those are genetically selected trout for soybean. That's why they outperform. That's why they are way better in terms of growth significantly. But after 30 weeks, till 24 weeks, we didn't see any significant difference among these three groups. Then we looked at the only the strain B because the strain A was not significantly different. So I don't want to show the data for feed intake and FCR. A strain B was significantly different. You could see their uh, feed intake was lower in fish meal. That's why they were lower in growth maybe. However, the feed conversion ratio at the end of 30 weeks, um, fish meal fed group has the better FCR compared to the other group. That means they can utilize um, better way compared to the soybean or other groups then we'll go further then we look the gene expression data especially the um, inflammatory markers uh, such as cytokines tumor uh, necrosis factor at tnf alpha and interleukin 8 here is the interesting thing you could see that after 
from six weeks onwards, these gene expression are highly expressed, which indicates that fish is going through some inflammation, okay? And it doesn't matter interleukin-8 or TNF-alpha, both has the similar pattern. But interestingly is the soybean meal has kind of higher expression. After 12 weeks, it drops down. It doesn't matter strain A or strain B. It doesn't matter interleukin-8 for a strain A or a strain B. Everything gets dropped down after 12 weeks. And thereafter, they are kind of parallel to fish meal and glutamine fed groups, which indicates that if you run long-term period of study, then you know the better answer. Here, what you learn is that after 12 weeks, fish are trying to get acclimatized with these new diets, and they are kind of sacrificing their gut to have better absorption of nutrients for better growth, because growth was not significantly different. Then we looked at the barrier integrity markers, such as the mycin-like chain kinase. Occludine, which is kind of determination for uh, barrier functions. Those are both are tight junction related proteins, genes. And you could see here similar pattern. Interestingly, uh, MLCK up to 12 weeks, it was highly expressed. And thereafter, it gets dropped down, and all three groups are similar, no significantly different which means this tight junction has been compromised up to 12 weeks. I mean, they lost their barrier. Why? Because they wanted to have more absorption of nutrients to have better growth. What, how can they, they have more absorption? That's why they might lose those barriers to get more absorption. That could be reason we don't know exactly. Just we believe that animals sacrifice their gut for better growth. Thereafter, we move to the another gene expression that is related to amino acid transporters such as cell, solute uh, carrier, SLC1A5, and then anti-inflammatory -in cytokines, okay? These genes are also very important. And we found a similar trend. After 12 weeks, everything happening. After 12 weeks, it dropped down, and thereafter, it's parallel, not significantly different from each other, okay? So this is the gene expression data uh, which summarize that after 12 weeks, fish has the capability in terms of the protein expression uh, that kind of acclimatizing after 12 weeks, 18 weeks onwards. Then I just want to give you the, some morphological um, view of the uh, distal intestine of the um, trout uh, every six weeks, but I'm not going to give you the uh, data for every six weeks, just for six weeks, 18 weeks, and 30 weeks. Here you could see the soybean meal fed group has the inflammation. Clearly, you could see that. It doesn't matter in strain A or strain B, but when you add this glutamine, you could see there is this, some kind of mitigating effects. It is not as good as like fish meal, but still it's better. Then we look at the 18 weeks data, similar pattern. Uh, soybean meal has the really worst um, gut health. You could see there are a lot of vacuoles, a lot of inflammation. However, the soybean meal with glutamine had some kind of, um, you know, better um, um, gut, some kind of, um, you know, they recover from those injury. 30 weeks at the end of the experiment, you could see the similar trend. So I don't want to go much detail there, but overall message is that addition of glutamine helps um, for the gut health. Then we go further in terms of histological data. It's called histological performance data in terms of villi length. You could see the villi length as the animals grow Every six weeks, their villi length increase. It doesn't matter, soybean, fish meal, or glutamine group, everywhere, fish, uh, their villi length increased. Interestingly, villi length is lower for soybean meal fed group, highest for fish meal, and then in between for the glutamine group. That means this addition of glutamine helps those villi to have better size so they can absorb nutrients better way. Then we look at the villi width, Great trend. You could see that significantly different. Fish meal was lower, soybean meal was the highest, and glutamine was in between. Then we go further in terms of cumulative, cumulative um, histological uh, scores. This cumulative, cumulative histological scores provides a nice visual uh, of the development of intertitis with the time such as mucosal fold, goblet cells, inflammatory cells, uh, and then vacuoles and lamina propria. 
if you put all these things together, you could see soybean meal has the highest number, which means that they are more inflamed, they have more enteritis. okay? So I would like to conclude, first part of my presentation is that glutamine has no effect on growth performance except uh, strain B at the end of the experiments only on the 30 weeks data, otherwise there was no significant difference. The onset of intertitis could be happening first by barrier function loss and then by inflammation. That's, that's conclusion based on the gene data. Overall, we believe that this neutral amino acid such as glutamine can help, will help to improve the gut epithelial health during this intertitis. Then we did another trial by using the bile acid as in feed additives to mitigate those intertitis in trout. What I did why I choose this bile acid? Because bile acid has an important role in um, inflammation. There are two pathways. First pathway through the TGR. Eh? TGR5 is called Takeda G protein couple receptor, which is also called as bile acid receptor. What they do is that through the GPCR, the GPCR is G protein couple receptors, you know, um, in development. Uh, for the activation of macrophages, okay? So if there will be an inflammation, there's a chance these genes will be get, you know, activated. What this bile acid they do, these bile acid, they suppresses the NFK beta and then also maintain the tight junction function. So if you have better tight junction of interstices, there will be no leakage, okay? There will be no inflammation. This is the first pathway. Second pathway is the FXR. FXR is the Faranasoid X receptor. You know, what they do is that it helped the bile acid to, you know, control these receptors. It's a nuclear receptors. It also represses the pro-inflammatory cytokines in enterocytes and macrophages. So the, there are different types of bile acid, okay? There are a long list of bile acid, five or six bile acid. Um, TGR5 is activated by both conjugated and unconjugated bile acid, but the most potent activator is the toric lithocholic acids followed by lithocholic acids, deoxycholic acid, and achidonoxycholic acid and cholic acid. These are the all bile acid and which have a role in terms to, you know, activate this TGR5. This is the first pathway. Second pathway is called FXR, as I mentioned earlier, that can also get activated by the cholic acid. First will be the CDCA, followed by DCA, LCA, and CA. You have to be very careful that CDA is hydrophobic and it can also cause cytotoxicity. So better not to use this CDCA uh, in your feed. However, uh, fortunately, um, we learned uh, about the Runion. It's a feed company based in China. Uh, they have also branch in the United States. Um, I, I had discussion with them and they revealed their bile acid composition uh, and I wanted to have more DCA and CDA, CDCA in my um, composition. And fortunately, they provided us this bile acid. And this bile acid is good for growth enhancer. And most of the people, they think that bile acid is just an emulsifier. No, it's not just an emulsifier. It also protects your gut and it also protects your liver. So that's the function for this Runion um, bile acid. Uh, we use this bile acid in our fish feed formulation uh, at the level of 1.5 percent. So we have um, six diets, fish meal, soybean meal, 30 uh, percent soybean meal, 40 percent, we added 1.5 percent bile acid. And we ran this experiment for 18 weeks and then we sampled six weeks, 12 weeks and 18 weeks. There was no significant um, effect of bile acid on growth, but numerically you could see the growth was increased numerically. FCR was decreased by adding this um, bile Bile acid. Then we have some of the beautiful pictures of gut histology. You could see that soybean meal uh, fed group 30% had inflammation. However, but when you add this bile acid, those inflammation get mitigated significantly. In, in terms of 40% addition of soybean meal, you could see the worst uh, inflammation in that group. But when you add this um, bile acid, there is a significantly positive impact. There, gut health is improved a lot. Then we looked at the villi length. Villi length was increased by supplementation of bile acid, especially in the 40% inclusion of um, soybean meal. 
and then bill live width was decreased okay that's a great thing for the addition of bile acid in terms of gut health this is overall concluding remarks i would say that functional feed additives such as glutamine and bile acid can improve the gut health uh, growth was not affected so far. Maybe it will be for long-term study, in, in, especially in biology study. Gene expression, um, data reveals that after 12 weeks, there is a trend for recovery and it's good for salmonish aquaculture, but this feed additive can be applied for other commercial fish species. So thank you. If you have any question, you can shoot me email. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for a nice presentation. Time is up. Uh, we can have one quick question. Is there any question or comments from the floor or online? See any, see any questions there for the local participants? If not, I might ask one quick question um, because I know that you evaluated these suppl supplements separately, but do you have any insights, for instance, based on the histological results, whether glutamine or the bile acids would be more effective in limiting this enteritis? Uh, we are still, uh, thank you, uh, Delbert. Um, we are still halfway for this experiment. Uh, we just completed 12 weeks. So we are still waiting for the data for 18 weeks. Hopefully we'll have it and then uh, uh, we will see how it goes. Uh, but we believe that uh, based on the histology data, what we have some cumulative score, which I did not present, and then some other data, it looks like bile acid is more effective than glutamine, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but we just discovered recently that this pathway might help to mitigate the enteritis. So this, is, this work is part of one of my PhD students. So we decided to move with bile acid, not as emulsifier, but also protect the gut health. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you for thank the presentation. You. Okay, great, thank you for the speakers. Please give me big hands. Thank you all.